Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and after a long hiatus, we are back on the Rockstar. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, those of you who are new to the channel or haven't seen this as I haven't worked on it for quite some time, this is the Rockster. This is my 1998 Porsche Boxster with a Audi V8 swap that I put in from an Audi A6. Uh, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up if you missed it and uh, think about subscribing. It does help us out. Um, so as many of you all have seen, I've spent a fair bit of time working on Harry, uh, my orange Porsche 911 in the background for a while now, just because I have my Tasmania trip uh, coming up. So I wanted to get it all right for that. Now that's done, we can get back stuck into the Rockster. And I was uh, basically to catch you up where we were, I had the whole car running and uh, driving up and down the road, but it was overheating. As soon as it basically came up to temperature, it just overheated. And um, I pulled it all apart, thought it might have been the thermostat, and uh, it wasn't the thermostat at all. It was my poor plumbing. So it was the way that I'd had the, uh, uh, the overflow plumbed into the system. So basically, uh, as soon as the thermostat opened, it just pumped the water straight into the overflow and it was overflowing out, the, uh, out there. There was just too much pressure. I put it in the wrong part of the line. My mistake. So um, I, uh, in this meantime, I've been messing around with uh, different fan belt sizes. Uh, the fan belt I had before kept slipping, as many of you will have seen in previous episodes, and uh, that was due to the fact that it was only it was just too big. But uh, I had to try about four different custom sizes to uh, get it to fit because it is a very tight fit to get it in. Um, I finally got one that um, that actually has some tension on it, so we should have fixed the uh, the fan belt slipping issue. So now it's time to uh, now I've got the new belt in there. It's time to button this all back up again, connect it all up. I have um, previously also put in the oil accumulator, so uh, that has to be set up for the first time. So there's a bit of stuff to do. We've got to put it all back together now and uh, see if we can get back to where we left off. Okay, so redoing things, uh, I've fed through, this is my new overflow hose, this is the original heater hose, and this is where the overflow is going to go now, uh, which is basically where the original box that had it. So uh, uh, I'm gonna put a T into this, I've cut it, uh, there's another pipe up in there, so let's put the T in. Uh, a few Raceworks push locks fittings, and uh, we should be all plumbed in. So I've gone through now and I've connected up my overflow again with that T-piece through to the heater. Uh, all of the radiator lines and power steering and basically everything is all reconnected on the car. So now it's time to top up the fluids again and see if it will still start. All right, so it's now time to start getting the oil accumulator set up to uh, actually run. So you can see it's got a gauge on the end of it and it's got a uh, like a tire pressure fill, is it a Schrader valve, I think is what it's called, um, here. And uh, on the other end, it's got the, uh, the ball valve to actually open and close it. So what we wanna do is we wanna open it up and uh, basically inside this is just a, uh, there's a piston that can slide backwards and forwards. So the way to prepare it, with the ball valve open, we wanna fill it up to, um, between 60 and 100 PSI, so uh, let's do that. And that should hopefully push the piston all the way down this far end. So now we're up uh, just over 80 PSI, so it should be all the way down the other end. And now we want to bleed it down to about six PSI. So Okay, so basically we've just got about six PSI in here now. It's hard to gauge on this gauge, but I don't have any better uh, way that will actually read low enough to get that. But it's just below the 10. 
Uh, basically, you just want a, um, a low amount of pressure in here. Uh, once the oil, uh, once the engine starts up, the oil pressure will actually fill this um, cylinder up with oil and uh, push the piston down towards this end, compressing the air. This gauge will go up and you'll actually see how much, basically how much uh, oil pressure you're running. And the, the way, way it works, um, for those of you who missed it earlier, basically what this thing does is um, if you happen to be cornering hard and the engine uh, run, starts running dry or uh, all pressure drops for any reason, um, this will uh, force oil back into the system because it's already pressurized and uh, hopefully save your engine from dying if you uh, have oil starvation. So uh, this is just a bit of an insurance policy, relatively um, cheap uh, compared to, say, a dry sump oil system. This is much, much cheaper. The other benefit is once uh, the car's running, before you shut it off, if you shut the valve off, you lock the oil, pressurized oil, into the cylinder. And before you start the car again, if you open the valve, what it will actually do is it will force oil in through the engine and uh, pre-oil the engine before it starts so you're not starting a dry engine like you normally would. Um, just a bit of added uh, benefit of uh, something like this. So with that side of the accumulator sorted, um, it's actually a two litre uh, oil accumulator, which means that I need to add an extra two litres of oil to the engine to uh, make sure that it's ready to go um, so that obviously that's going to suck it away from the engine and you don't want the engine to run dry. So um, two more litres of oil going in and um, yeah, we're getting there. All right, this is the uh, the moment of truth. I've put it mostly back together again. I've filled the oil. I haven't touched the coolant. There is no coolant in it at the moment. I thought it's not worth putting, filling the coolant unless I make sure that everything's running. I'm quite nervous because I've had this car apart. I'm worried that I've done something wrong. I haven't touched it in a long time. So uh, fingers crossed, this thing starts and everything is all good. Oh. Something doesn't sound good. Something doesn't sound good at all. Okay, it starts and runs, but it sounds very chattery like there's something's making a lot of racket. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's oil. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just not sure. It runs, but... Uh, yeah, I think it needs um, some further investigation, so I'm going to get it back up on the hoist and have a look. Uh, I don't know what I've done. It might be power steering. It sounds like it's coming from down here and I think it might be the power steering pump is, uh, is not sounding very nice. <laughs> All right, well, uh, it doesn't sound too sinister. I took the, uh, the timing belt covers off of the, uh, the front of the engine and doesn't seem to be anything nasty in there. I, it actually sounds like it is the power steering pump that is making all that racket. Um, the sound does seem like it's getting less, I think just because I had to drain the power steering pump so it needs bleeding again. It just sounds particularly nasty. Uh, I managed to build up some oil pressure just then. Um, probably not up to full pressure, but uh, that was up to about 50 PSI. It's got in uh, uh, in the tank now. So it's obviously got a bit of oil in there ready to, uh, ready to go and sort of do its job the way it's supposed to. So we are having luck. Uh, now I think it's time to refill the radiator and uh, get that uh, fluid in there. And hopefully we'll... Uh, We'll be able to get this thing back out on the road again and testing. 
All right, so for refilling the radiator, um, I've got this uh, vacuum bleeding tool. I recommend it if you've got uh, even standard boxes or 911s. They, um, it's the only way to fill them properly. It is, like I had such a headache filling my 996 without this. Uh, absolutely recommend getting one of these things. It makes it uh, your life so much easier. And it's got the added benefit that it can also tell you whether you've got a leak in your uh, radiator system somewhere. So um, basically it's just got a conical end on it. You stick it into the, uh, the uh, overflow, into the fill point uh, for the radiator. And uh, I've just hung this uh, up here just so you can sort of see it. To start with, we want to try and pull a vacuum into the system. So um, basically it's a venturi system. Um, the air blows through here. Once I turn the air on, it will actually um, blow out this way and suck a vacuum in through here. And uh, you'll see the vacuum come up on the gauge. So uh, let's just do that now. All right, and um, you can now leave this for a second and just uh, see if it holds it means that uh, you don't have any leaks in the system. So this is holding quite nicely, as you can see here, and uh, I've shut it off. So basically there's a vacuum in this whole system. So now we know that's good. Um, I get my coolant and uh, put my fill tube into the coolant. And as we already have a vacuum, if I open this valve, it will fill the, uh, the vacuum with the coolant. It's filling it quite rapidly. All right, yeah, just went through that process a couple of times, just pulled another vacuum and then uh, filled it up, took sort of two goes or three goes, and uh, I have a nice, uh, nice full coolant system. So these things well worthwhile. I'll put a link to uh, something similar in the description. Um, yeah, absolutely recommend getting something like this for filling up these things. If you're servicing uh, 911s in particular, this is the go. All right, well, uh, now we're starting to put everything back together again. And uh, one of the things that was plaguing this car before when I was driving it was I could feel it wiggle under power. So, so when I accelerate, it sort of would wiggle one way and then back off it would go the other way. So um, the camera underneath the car wasn't conclusive, but um, there were a lot of suggestions that uh, I was missing these rear under trays. So I've got this panel here, which, to be honest, it's only a very thin uh, aluminium panel. It's not that much, but it does tie these two sides together a bit more. There was also this crossbar that sat across, locked into the back of this panel here, but uh, this is no longer gonna fit. So um, we're just going to leave it out for now, see how it goes, and I might have to refabricate something else to uh, replace this crossbar. Okay, so the car is back together and um, I'm going to now do a, uh, a bit of a test, start it up, keep it running, particularly monitoring the temperatures. I wanna make sure that the, uh, the, the temperature can get up to temperature, fans can kick in, all the things happen like they're supposed to. <sighs> Fingers crossed, we've got a running, working Rockstar. All sounds good so far. Temperatures rising gradually. One thing we do have is we have an oil leak and a power steering leak. Well, that is annoying and inconclusive because uh, just as I was getting up the temperature, I was blipped the throttle a couple of times and Suddenly the engine got stuck at 1800 RPM because it was saying it had an e-throttle fallout. So basically the, it, it's lost connection to the e-throttle. And um, it's, uh, yeah, now it's not restarting. Um, I couldn't get to see whether the thermostat had actually opened up or not, but the temperature did get up to, uh, I think, 98 degrees. So should be up getting opening by then. So uh, let's delve a bit deeper and see what's going on. 
I am really not having any luck with this car. Um, so uh, I'm just checking then because the car won't restart. And uh, I thought it might have been that uh, loose power cable to the starter motor. Tighten that up. That's not the issue. Uh, I've now connected up a uh, test light straight to the power wire coming from the ignition to the, the solenoid. So by turning this on, I can see that the starter is actually uh, getting power to the solenoid, which means that the solenoid is stuck. And uh, I'll give it a bit of a tap, but uh, generally what that means is that I need to get myself a new starter solenoid. It's just another thing that I've got to keep getting. It's just this car is just keeps throwing me curveballs. All right, I've got the starter motor out, so I'm just gonna double check and see if it is actually uh, fried or what's going on. So basically this, uh, this drive in here should move forward and spin. That's when the starter motor is working. Um, I've connected up to a jump pack and um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll start it with my little piece of wire here and uh, see if it actually works. Nah, she looks like she's fried. Yep, it looks like it's fried. So um, if I knock it, I can free up the uh, solenoid in there, but it's still not spinning. It's, uh, yeah, it feels like it's actually sort of locked pretty hard here. Yep. Well, that's annoying. But at least I know that it's definitely the starter motor, it's not something else, so uh, we need to replace the starter motor and um, I think that pretty much puts paid to uh, box the play for this week. Well, it looks like it is game over again on the Rockster front. Uh, this car just keeps on fighting me and uh, now it seems like the starter motor has died. There's also the power steering pump leaks a lot and is making a hell of a racket. So I think it might be time to look at actually swapping that out, maybe getting an electric power steering pump, which some of you did um, comment about potentially using at one stage. And uh, originally I wanted to use the, the one that's in there just because it's, it's already there. I don't have to buy anything. I just had to connect it up. Uh, I had to make up the, the simple little power steering uh, reservoir, but that seems like it's just more trouble than it's worth. So um, for the time being, I think it's uh, ordering a new um, starter motor, power steering pump, and uh, then we'll uh, be able to get back onto the Rockster and hopefully get it tuned and everything else. Everything else seems to be running okay. The, um, the radiator system, the, uh, all the coolant lines and everything, nothing was uh, leaking, nothing wasn't quite at overheating stage when, uh, <laughs> when we uh, had to kill it. Um, yeah, there's just, there's just teething problems with these sort of things. So, um, I think that's it for this week. As always, um, thank you guys for joining me on this journey. Think about, uh, subscribing if you haven't. If you want to join us, uh, a day earlier than everybody else and watch the videos ad-free, join us on Patreon. And if you need parts for any of your Porsches, even if it is a weird hodgepodge of different parts and bits and pieces like the Rockster, Make sure you compare prices at PushPartsBoyGF.com first. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I'll see you in the next one.